Welcome to His Gospel Christian Fellowship. It's an honor to have you join us in worship service today. We invite you to visit us virtually at any time. Our mission is to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to love and support one another in our Christian growth. We are not here to judge, criticize, or condemn anyone. We teach, preach, and live God's Word and God's Word alone.
Good morning. Good morning, all visitors, members, and family of His Gospel Christian Fellowship. We're so pleased to have you with us today. Thanks for joining us in worship to our Heavenly Father. And uh, our opening scripture for today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Our opening scripture for today will be from Psalm 108, verses 1 through 5. Now, usually we tend to go to Psalms 100 or 150, but today we're going to go and sing unto the Lord a new song like David did here. And the scripture reads, My heart is confident in you. O oh God, no wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Wake up, lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations. For your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the, to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine all over the earth. Amen. Amen. That's a wonderful verse for an opening, uh, a wonderful uh, collection of verses for an opening, and we absolutely are here to praise God. Let us approach the throne of his grace and his mercy in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for bringing us all together today. We thank you, Father, for making this broadcast available. We pray right now, Father, that nothing would be said that you don't want said. We pray that this message would land and graft into the hearts of all of those within, within its vision. And we pray, Father, that your purpose, that your will, that your way would be impressed upon us through this word, Father, and that it might be ingrained with us so that we can walk forward in its direction. Let your word accomplish what you set out to have it accomplish, Father. We thank you. I pray that you would move me aside, Father, and let the Holy Spirit be the preacher, be the teacher. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Now, one of the things that we're going to look at today is, you know, when we look around at how we are here in the United States today, uh, as a people, I can't help but feel sorrow. The, the flames of extremism on the right and left are steadily being fanned by those whose only vested interest is in attaining and keeping power for themselves. There is no limits to which they will go in order to make that happen. Nothing is sacred and anything can and will be sacrificed in order to ensure their position. Um, we're all simultaneously becoming cannon fodder as well as the ammunition itself in this war against unity. We continually follow the opinions uh, from those who cause strife among the brethren without question. And we willfully allow their influence to turn us into differing, from having differing opinions towards each other to be mortal enemies of each other. And even within the body of the church, this is true. What we've forgotten is that our problem is vertical, not horizontal. And I truly believe that Jesus is the cure. And before anyone gets the idea of cherry picking what they know in the Bible to support their personal positions and opinions, we're just going to go ahead and wash that away with Jesus' actual words. Amen. So speaking of enemies, today we're going to explore one of the most controversial teachings that Jesus ever gave us. And it most certainly was during his time on earth and probably even more so now. I'm speaking specifically of his telling us to love our enemies. Now, this is one of the many topics that he addressed in the well-known and often quoted Sermon on the Mount. Matthew and Luke both covered this teaching, but it's interesting to note that the message containing our target scripture was delivered just after the apostles were chosen. This speaks to how important his words were concerning those who oppose us. Now, today's text is coming from Luke 27, 
uh, through 31, Luke 27, 31. And in the New Living Translation, it reads, but to who you, but to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies, do good to those that hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who hurt you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Give to anyone who asks, and when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Amen, amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Now, here Jesus has given us the directive and then follows up with several examples of what that looks like, the culmination of which is seen in Luke 31, which is better known as the golden rule, or verse 31, which is known as the golden rule. Now, after a few more examples, he gives us the why in verse 35, which reads as follows. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High, for he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. Which brings us to our first point. Point number one, loving our enemies imitates God's character. Okay, loving our enemies imitates God's character. Now, it is in God's will that we be conformed to the likeness of his son. And here, he has given specific instructions on just how to do that. Focusing on what Jesus would do gets our eyes off of what we would do. And somehow today, I think some, somehow we've lost that or we get that confused. Now, some uh, are concerned with trying to follow the letter of the law and constantly spouting off the law, not paying attention to the fact that when we speak that way, we're also bringing ourselves under it. We disregard grace and we give no place for compassion. And if we're professing to know God's word on who he says he is and what he wants, but don't look at Psalm 149 verse five, can we really say we know him? Psalm 145, uh, Psalm 149 verse 5 says, The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. Now, this is exactly why this is called self-righteousness. And I want to check myself before we go further. Uh, I, believe that, I believe that the scripture calling was right. Uh, and we'll... We'll fix that uh, if not. But this is not God's idea. Self-righteousness is not God's idea. It's ours. Truly imitating God's character means that we do it his way. If we're not doing this, we are sabotaging God's plan for these people who are his creation, which is the second point. Loving our enemies promotes God's plan. Not only for our enemies, but for us. Whether it be that one person at work or that one person in your neighborhood or even someone with opposite political ideas, it is God's will that we would all come to know and love him. How are they supposed to know him if they don't see and experience the good example of a person who claims to? Their exposure to you is what provides the catalyst to a changed life. Here in his gospel, we often quote William J. Toms, and you may have heard this before, who said, be careful how you live. You may be the only Bible some person ever reads. Amen. Jesus, the word himself, was one person who changed the world by the example of his life. And any believer should be able to tell you without hesitation that they are not the same person they used to be after meeting someone who influenced them in the same way. Think back. Think back. For all of us who have a relationship of God, with God, someone came to us. Someone was there to us, for us. Someone provided an example as to 
what was the right way to be, what was the right way to live, uh, what was the, the right way to have a relationship with God. Someone showed us and it made an impression upon us. And when we took that journey and took that step for ourselves, we were no longer the same people they, we were before. So if we think about that, wouldn't that be the same thing that should happen for those we consider our enemies? This is how we become different. This is how the gospel is spread effectively. And this is how our Father's will for us is explained for us and them. So instead of sabotaging God's plan, we should be working on sabotaging the enemy's plan, which is point number three. Loving our enemies sabotages the enemy's plan. Now, 1 Peter 3, 9 says, don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. Amen. That is what God has called you to do, and he will bless you for it. Now, here's the unseen message of this passage. Not returning evil for evil is God protecting you. Okay? God protecting you. When we don't return evil for evil, it is God's way of protecting us by following that instruction. We often pray for protection from our enemies. And this is one thing that God uses to aid in that protection. You see, evil is only successful when you give in to its influence. Let me say that again. Evil is only successful when you give in to its influence, whether it was something against you or not. We give in to evil's influence by returning evil for evil. Okay? I guarantee you, if you respond with evil, your enemy will be the first one to run to someone in authority screaming about, look what they did to me, which only brings their evil plan into fruition. The very thing you start to fight against is the very thing that became true because we used the wrong method. Martin Luther King Jr. famously said that darkness cannot drive, cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So if we want to stop the enemy in their tracks, we have to trust the process and love as we were told. You may have heard people praying about halting the plans of the enemy against us. And yes, it's a good thing to pray for that. Canceling the assignments. It's a good thing to pray for that. But as with every prayer, we have to put ourselves in a position of faith and obedience to expect that result. Okay? Proverbs, verse, uh, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 21 and 22 says, If your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. You will heap burning coals of shame on their heads, and the Lord will reward you. Okay? Now, it may happen when you can see it or not. And maybe it'll happen immediately or not. But shame can be a motivating tool to get someone to see the error of their ways. And it's not for us to make them feel ashamed. We don't have that kind of control over people. But it can create an opportunity for genuine conviction to take place, thereby allowing God to speak to the heart of an individual. The idea is that a changed heart leads to a changed life. And you could very well be the person to start them off down that road to redemption simply by not returning evil for evil. It sounds easy, right? We all know it's really not. And sometimes these things get the better of us. But in conclusion, I want to say that many of these verses mention that God's blessing is attached to our obedience 
in this, in this matter. And we should all know by now that if God says it, he will do it. That blessing, however, can take many forms. But I believe this is the most important one which is that if we continue to love our enemies consistently, one by one, there is indeed a chance that we may have one less enemy, which is far more important than seeing them suffer and remaining an enemy. That indeed is a blessing in and of itself. And as we say that, that alone is worth the price of admission, okay? No one ever said that as a Christian, your life would become easy. In fact, many times it's quite the opposite. At its heart, loving our enemies removes our focus from ourselves and reinforces the new commandment given by Jesus in John 13, 34 and 35. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Like we said, we understand that it's not easy. But we're not just walking this particular path to shape our own character. Our lives are not all about us. We are simply here to do God's will. And the best of that is to love each other. Now, in order to be able to love each other that way, we need to first be able to love ourselves. Because even ourselves, we were enemies of God until we became to know him, until we came to know him. And someone loved us enough to be able to give his life that we might have everlasting life, that we might have that relationship with God in the first place. And that was Jesus himself. He was crucified for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the point at which we understand that if you've been ashamed, that if you had someone loved you, love you when you know that you didn't treat them well or you were their enemy, this is the point, this is the crossroad at which we come to the Lord and say, Lord, what have I been doing? When we come to the Lord and say, I'm ready to make a change. When we come to the Lord and say, I'm ready to release this grip that I have on my life, which has been so ineffective. This is the point at which we say, I'm ready to do it your way. And with that, this is the point where we are ready and we confess and say that, Lord, I'm ready to receive. If that's you right now, I want you to pray with me at this moment because the invitation is before you. You can continue to be at enmity with God or we can move forward and become a part of God's own family, of his kingdom, and we can let go all of these things that are stopping us from loving ourselves and each other and God himself. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you right now. Thank you for bringing me to this point. Thank you for showing me a reflection of myself, Father, and where I've fallen short. Thank you, Father, that you've allowed me to be able to see what it would be like to live in a world where there is love and where there is peace and where every man is more concerned about each other than their own. I pray, Father, I need this right now in my life. I pray, Father, and that you would grant me an audience because I am ready to receive you as Lord and Savior, Jesus. 
I pray that my sins would be washed away we, through, through the finished work on Calvary and that I might be brought into right relationship with you. All I have is yours. I cede control over what is going on in my life to you and I place my faith and my trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you've said that prayer, I wanna be the first to welcome you to the family of God. I'm so thankful that you made that decision. Everything's going to be okay. It may not necessarily be the what you thought it was, but I can tell you one thing, knowing that God will see you through and walk you through every difficulty from this point on and that he will never leave you or forsake you is worth all of the money in the world if not everything in the world. It is worth everything. God gave his very best to have you back in relationship with him. And it was free. It cost you nothing. So if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to first encourage you to give us a call or contact us. We'll be glad to speak with you. And if you can, find a way to make arrangements to have a water baptism, solidifying your decision-making to yourself and to the world and before God himself, as it is scripturally commanded. So with that, I just wanna thank you for joining us today. Thank you for turning aside. Thank you for giving a few minutes to be able to come before the Lord, hear a good and inspiring word and that you might be able to carry that with you. Take the love of God with you when we go back into the world until we meet again. It's all that he's asking us to do. Love the Lord your God with all your strength. And love the people that he created. It's what we're supposed to do. With that, our exiting scripture today will be from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. And it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them, thus says the Lord. Thank you for joining us today. Please pay attention to the parting messages that we have and be sure to try to look for us on Bible study on every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you very much. Have a great day and may God richly bless you. If you're looking for a church home, look no further. You can become a member of HGCF no matter where you live in the world. We would love to have you become a part of our family. If you'd like more information about our church, or if you'd like to join with us, just send an email to hisgospel at hisgospel.org. Again, that's hisgospel at hisgospel.org. We'd love to hear from you. Giving is a part of worship. If you don't already give virtually, now is a great time to do so. You can go to our website, and click on the Give button at the top of our landing page. Your giving is a matter between you and the Lord. However, we do want you to know that when you give to HGCF, that the money given is used directly and exclusively in supporting God's work. No member of the leadership of His Gospel receives a salary or a stipend from the church.